An action-packed day on the Brexit front today. The United Kingdom and the European Union have agreed on a deal which would define Britain's relationship with the European bloc post-Brexit. Having secured this, Prime Minister Theresa May is now asking lawmakers in the House of Commons to accept this agreement. Arguments heated up in the British Parliament as May tried to convince the MPs to accept the Brexit deal. The Prime Minister needs the support of 320 out of a total of 650 lawmakers in the House of Commons. The deal that will enable us to do this is now within our grasp. In these crucial 72 hours ahead, I will do everything possible to deliver it for the British people, and I commend this statement to the House. Leader of the Opposition and Labour Party's chief, Jeremy Corbyn, rejected the deal, saying it was bungled up. The Prime Minister stood on the steps of Downing Street and said a deal had been agreed between the UK and the European Commission and it was now up to the EU27. Until this Parliament has debated and voted, there is no UK agreement. This half-baked deal is a product of two years of botched negotiations in which the Prime Minister's red lines have been torn up Cabinet resignations have been racked up and checkers has been chucked. This is a vague menu of options, not a plan for the future and not capable of bringing our country together. And joining us from London is Vion's correspondent Natalie Powell. Uh, good evening, Natalie. Slow but sure progress for Theresa May, would you say? It certainly seems that way when it concerns Brussels. Of course, last week we had the draft withdrawal agreement on Brexit, which essentially sets out uh, the UK leaving the European Union bloc. And now we have her agreement with Brussels for the political declaration, which sets out the future relationship between the UK and the European Union, of course. And that will take place, all those negotiations will, negotiations will take place once Brexit has been completed. And we are expecting that to take place on the 29th of March. So following the 29th of March, there will be a 21-month 20 20 transitional period where uh, the UK and EU will essentially uh, look into their future relationship and try to come up with uh, negotiations and deals on that. So this is a draft text at this stage. It is 26 pages long and it has been signed off between the UK and Brussels. Um, it essentially is a roadmap of what that future future relationship will look like in terms of economy and trade, in terms of uh, free movement, security, etc. And the UK Prime Minister has said that this is exactly what the UK voted for in the Brexit referendum. She believes that this uh, future relationship deal, draft deal that she has come back with is the way forward. But there are many here in the UK that disagree with her. Notably, of course, the leader of the opposition, Jeremy Corbyn, who you've just heard from there, he called it 26 pages of waffle when she presented it to MPs in the UK Parliament. And he also questioned what uh, the negotiators had been doing over the past two years. But it's not just from the opposition parties where she has seen opposition. Within her own backbenches, she's seen opposition to this proposal for the future relationship as well, including from the hardline Brexiteers. Many have said that it's aspirational, that it's like a letter to Santa. Other people have said that it is a betrayal and a surrender to the EU. So a really divisive uh, deal, draft deal, that this appears to be at this stage. Admittedly, the bigger battle for Theresa May is at home. So I want to ask you some very quick questions, Natalie. What happens if this deal is not approved by the lawmakers in London? Is another referendum then on the cards? It certainly is on the cards. In terms of what happens, well, it's absolutely anyone's guess at this stage. Of course, a second referendum is possible, although many people think that it's not likely, given a lot of members of Parliament are against a second referendum. It's possible we may see another general election. It's possible Theresa May may be ousted from that seat at 10 Downing Street, of course. So there are lots of moving parts, lots of possibilities about what may happen if, indeed, 
those lawmakers vote down both the EU withdrawal bill and this political declaration. We are expecting that to take place, of course, following this Brussels summit, which takes place this weekend. We're expecting the EU 27 other leaders to vote on uh, the Brexit deal, uh, draft deal at this stage. And then after that, it needs to get passed through the British Parliament. If it does drop down at that stage, well, it really does throw the UK into quite a lot of chaos. And as I've said, anyone's guess what could happen next if that does take place. Looks like it's going to be a winter of heated politics in London. Natalie Powell, thanks very much for joining us with that update on the way the Brexit deal is progressing. India is in the middle of election season. It's being dubbed as yet another semi-final before the general election next year. Five states are voting, but the biggest political headlines are coming from the state that's not even on the electoral calendar. Jammu and Kashmir is now faced with the reality of fresh elections after the dissolution of the state assembly last night. 24 hours later, the gloves are off, mostly on social media, and the weapons of choice seem to be memes. In a dramatic turn of events that involved a broken fax machine and some frenetic tweeting, the assembly of the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir suddenly ceased to exist last night. मैंने जो जम्मू कश्मीर की जनता के पक्ष में था वो काम किया है। The legislative body was dissolved, and it's the timing of it all that has raised many questions. Rival alliances had staked the claim to form the government in the state. An alliance of three rival parties tried to fax the governor to stake claim. Former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister and PDP President Mehbooba Mufti wrote a letter to Governor Satyapal Malik. Claiming support of Omar Abdullah's National Conference and the Congress Party, but unfortunately, the governor's office fax machine wasn't working. Then Mabuba tried calling him, but says he was unavailable. She then tweeted twice. Governor Malik reportedly rejected the entire proposal, saying that the parties had opposing ideologies and went ahead to pull the plug. Meanwhile, Jammu and Kashmir People's Conference leader Sajjad Lone too had tweeted claiming the majority to form government with the support of the BJP. And the man in the middle of it all came out with a strong defence of his tough decision. His point was all the parties had over five months' time to form an alliance. Why cry horse now? खुद मुझे एक हफ्ता पहले फोन करके कहा कि मेरे एमएलएस को एनआईए के डर से डराया जा रहा है। दूसरे पक्ष के लोगों ने कहा कि बहुत बड़े पैमाने पर रुपए का लालच दिया जा रहा है। तो हॉस्ट ट्रेडिंग 20 दिन पहले शुरू हो चुकी थी। अब मैं किसी को भी मौका देता और उसको जो टाइम देता उसमें और बड़े पैमाने पर बहुत गंदगी होती, बहुत हॉस्ट ट्रेडिंग होती, म� Governor Malik believes that the coming together of PDP, NC and the Congress party will fail to bring stability in the state. But Omar Abdullah will have none of it. In a separate press conference, the National Conference chief slammed the decision of the governor and raised several questions including why does Satyabal Malik not come clean on who was behind the alleged horse trading in the state. Omar also said that his party is willing to provide moral support to the People's Democratic Party or PDP in case they are willing to take the matter to the court. The National Conference had verbally committed its support to the PDP. We stand by that decision. But ultimately, because the letter went from the PDP, the decision of whether to challenge this in the court rests with them. Talks of a coalition between PDP and the Congress Party have been doing the rounds for some time now. But what has surprised many is that the alliance now includes the National Conference, the main opposition party in the state. The two regional parties, PDP and NC, have been warring factions for a long time. Now it's all up to the voters of the state to decide all over again. The governor's rule will end in a month's time and elections will need to be held sooner rather than later. Bureau Report, World is One.